All right, so now we have state two, we have state one. Next up is state three. So for state three, um, what do I know about state three? Like I said, I know that from state from state two to state three, the delta V is nil, right? There's no change in volume, they have the same volume. So therefore work is also nil. So therefore delta U equals Q uh, work, there's no work that happens from two to three. Okay, so that means that delta U, U3 minus U2 equals Q. In this case, we know Q, we were given Q, that's 750, 750 kilojoules per kilograms. We know U2 because we just calculated just now, not calculated, we got it from interpolation. So the only unknown there is U3, right? So U3 will simply be um, the U2 plus the 750 because we're giving that extra energy. Okay, so if that's the case, we just need to sum those guys up and we find that our U3 is 12, uh, 1200 and 0.2, so 12, 1241.2 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay, and that's our first data point for three. Okay, and that's the first data point for three. And this means that I can now go to V3 and grab all the properties I can, all the, the, the properties related to temperature, right? So once again, I'm going to do the same deal, right? Same thing. I'm going to go and find VR. My idea is find VR three. So I can use VR three to calculate VR four. So I'm looking for 1241, 1241 in this column here, internal energy, or this one here. 1241. Twelve forty two twelve so it's right between these guys. Okay? So temperature three, which is actually one of the things I need to find, right, is between fifteen twenty and fifteen forty. Okay? And to be able to find it, I just need to interpolate for um twelve forty one point forty one point Okay, and the other thing that I'm after, which is the R, I just need to interpolate between, oops, let's put it over here. I just need to interpolate between these two guys here. All right, so once again, interpolation, I interpolate T3 and I get 1539, which makes a lot of sense because 41 is very close to 42 here, which is the one from the 1240 Kelvin. And then for VR3, we get 6.588, 588, no units, okay, dimensionless. Um, all right, last but not least, so this is for state three, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to where our info is here. Okay, and then last piece of the puzzle is from three to four, we know VR, we know V4 over V3 is eight, right? Because they're the same volumes. And we also know VR4 has to be equal to VR3, like so. Only because it's an isentropic process, all right? If it were not an isentropic process, this would not be true. So if this is the case, this means that my VR4, oops, let me keep the blue, VR4 will just be my VR3 times eight. And we happen to know VR3, we happen to know VR3 is the value we just got, the 6.588, so therefore my VR4 equals, uh, what did I get here, 52.7, uh, 52.7, all right, beautiful. Okay, now, you know, I have pretty much all my states, not completely defined, let's say semi-defined, because I can grab all the properties that are related to temperature. I just can't um, grab all the thermodynamic properties because I need two things for each of them, right? To 
um, properties for each of them. But, you know, I'm you know, almost there. I already found one of the answers I was looking for. Part A was asking to me, asking me what was the uh, temperature of state three. And that's it. The other thing you wanted was the pressure on state three. So now for the pressure, I'm going to need to do some um, thinking around the properties I have, right? Because I know that from state two to state three, they have the same volume. So therefore, there's a relationship between um, ideal gases I can do PV equals P2 V2 divided by T2 equals P3 V3 divided by T3. Volumes are the same. So these guys are the same. So therefore, if I am looking for P3, which is what I'm after, I just need to do P2 and the ratio between T3 and T2. Now, I know this T3 already. I know T2. If you recall, we got T2 when we grab, um, when we found out VR2, we also found the temperature from interpolation. So that's fine. What I need to be able to finish this off is pressure 2. Do I know pressure 2? I don't think I do. Okay, so I'm missing this guy. But I do have this one completely defined. So I can use, actually, I can use this to find P2. If P2, we can do this. All right, so that's that's my plan. Um, so I'm going to do the same exact thing, exactly the same thing, but with state number 1. So I'm going to say P1 V1 divided by T1 has to be equal to P2 V2 divided by T2. And I'm looking for P2. And that will be P1 V1 divided by T1, T2 divided by V2. So let me just rearrange. I'm going to put the T on the side here, T2 over here. I'm going to put V3 over here, just to make it super clear that this is something that I know. This ratio here I know. This temperature I know. This temperature I know. And this pressure I know. So I know, okay, I know, I know everything. So this is relatively easy. This is 95 by the way, note that the pressure that I put here is going to be the pressure of this side here, right? Because then temperature cancels temperature, uh, volume cancels volume. So 95 kilopascals times what are the temperatures that we found. For state 1, it was 300 from the start, Kelvin. And for state number 2, here it is, 673.1. Hey, they're both in Kelvin. And then the ratio between those two, V3 and V2, we know, right? V3 is smaller. V... No, this is not V3. This is V1. I'm sorry. V1. Is that right? Do not flip it. V2, P2. That's right. Okay, that's right. So we know V1 is greater than V2 by 8, right? So the ratio between the two is 8. So this is just 8. We've known that all along. Okay, so P2 will be, according to this math here, P2 is 1,705. In kilopascals. Great, and this is exactly what I was missing, to be able to find out what is P3. That goes here. Okay, so now where I have P2, I'm running out of space. So let's do this. You guys go a step down, and then you read them here, and then this becomes P3 equals P2 that we just found, T3 that we know. Um, 15. 39 divided by T2 that we also know, which is we just grabbed 673.1. Okay, so P3, according to all this, is 3,899 kilo.
That was close. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. A lot of work to find pressure three. But that's part A, right? Part A is what is the temperature three and what is pressure three. Okay, so let's just recap what we did so far. We had all the information for one. We used that to find VR1. With VR1, we calculated our VR2. Okay, with VR2, we got temperature. We got the internal energy. Um, and that's it. And then with VR2, we used um, internal energy we found to be able to find internal energy of that guy there. And with that, we found internal energy 3, which then allowed, allows us to get VR3, temperature 3. So that's one of the things we were looking. With this VR3, we can use it to calculate VR4. Once we got VR4, we got temperature 4. We got internal energy 4 and all those guys there. Then, because we wanted the pressure, we needed to first find the pressure on state 2. So then we used the ideal gas uh, relationship to find pressure two. And once we found pressure two, we used it again, ideal gas relationship to find pressure three. And that's where, where we are right now. Beautiful. Next, what is the network output? Okay, so we know basically almost everything we need to be able to, to find what is the output, right? We know... Um, <clears throat> we know all those set of properties. We know the, okay, so we know this guy. We know, the only thing we're missing is this guy. Okay, we need to know what is the Q leaving, Q out. To find Q out, once again, there's no change in volume from 4 to 1. If there's no change in volume, there's no work. So therefore, this becomes change in internal energy equals Q. So I know U1, I know U4, that's easy, right? We just need to subtract those two guys to find uh, what is the Q that's leaving this system here. It will simply be the uh, difference between U1 and U3. All right, beautiful. So if that's the case, and U1, U1. Did I ever grab U1? I did, right in the beginning here. Okay, here it is, beautiful. So my U1 is here, 214. And my U4 never grab u4 that's silly of me so let's just let just make a placeholder here i want delta u that equals q out as i'm going from four to one okay so we grabbed oh did we know it from is that what we use all the time no we didn't use this we knew from four we got vr4 Oh, okay, okay, and I know, I know, we got VR4, but we never used this, right? So now we, that's what we need to do. VR4, 52.7, between these two guys here. Okay, beautiful. So that's the missing part. I know U4 has a temperature between 760 and 780, and that's my internal energy is between 550 and 576 okay because it's 52 i'm expecting it to be closer to the bottom value right so once again interpolation all the good stuff that we do and then we get out of this the temperature of 774.5 kelvin and we get the internal energy of 57 oh, 571.5 69 kilojoules per kilograms. So these guys here, I'm going to grab. I'm going to put it here to the side. And then this is T4. And then this is U4. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so now that we have this, and we can use our placeholder, okay? So, as we're going from state 4 down to state 1, there's no change in volume, so therefore, there's no work. If there's no work, then we're left with Q, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. It's Q out. So, all I'm going to do is take U4, subtract U1. Okay, now, question. 
Shouldn't I do u1 minus u4? Actually, well, sure, I can do that. It's going to give me a negative value, right? Because I know u4 is greater than u1. And the negative value just indicates it's, it's heat going out. So if you put the out there, right? if you put the out, you know the direction things are going. It doesn't matter, right? Positive or negative, that's just indicating the direction. But if you feel more comfortable, sure, we can do that. And this is going to be the 571.69 minus the 200. And 16, 14.07 that we found before. So therefore, Q out is just negative 357.62. Okay, and the reason why we did all this is because we wanted to find what was a work output, and the work output is work output is just Q in minus Q out. Why? Well, because it's a cycle. And if it's a cycle, then we know delta U has to be zero, right? Because it's going to be U1. Oops, not this. It's going to be U1 back to U1. So it's going to be U1 minus U1. That's zero. Okay, so that means that if I want to find what is the work net output, all I need to do is take the 750. 750. Subtract the 357. 0.62, and I'm going to grab my work net output as, what did I get, 392.4. Okay, so every time that we go, we run our auto cycle from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1, we are outputting about 400 kilojoules of energy per kilogram of air. Okay, per kilogram of air.